where I'll be joining uh, Salif Fawaza, who is a boxing promoter, and he'll be giving us more insight on the world of uh, boxing and how it has been promoted here in Nigeria. Good to have you with us, Salif. Thanks for having me. Now, let's talk about um, boxing promotion here in Nigeria. How has it been for you? I mean, what really caught your attention to get you interested in promoting the sport in the country? Uh, I, was, I was born and brought up in, in Nigeria, and uh, I was always involved in uh, different sports when I was younger. Mm. I, would, I would go to National Stadium, uh, train with the Pepsi Academy. I would um, play volleyball with the guys there. So I've always been um, a sports fan in Nigeria. And in terms of boxing, I, I was training boxing myself uh, at some point uh, with a lot of uh, Nigerian boxers. And, you know, I used to go to watch boxing shows as well. And so I, I met a lot of uh, boxers, like I said, and I got close to them and we got close together. And then, um, you know, I saw a bigger picture um, for these talents, you know, uh, aside from me having a passion for, for the sport itself. So, um, you know, I started managing a couple of boxers here and there. And then, you know, the bigger picture was uh, promotions. And that's how we, we started uh, Saleh Gloves Promotions for amateur and professional boxing. So how's the journey been for you so far? Talking about your your brand. Well, you know, it's been uh, it's been tough. You know, uh, boxing has been uh, dead for some time in Nigeria in the last uh, years, and uh, but in the last couple of years, uh, uh, myself and our promotion, and obviously some other promoters that uh, are out there and active, you know, we've uh, we've raised the bar. You know, boxing is probably now the fastest growing sport in, in the country, I believe. Uh, the journey has been has been tough, but um, you know it's worth it. Uh, we knew what we were getting into. We knew that you know we had to build a strong foundation. Uh, I believe we, we've done that by now, and uh, you know um, we'll we'll get there. You know, uh, there's a lot of champions coming up, a lot of talents, um, and as you can see in world uh, combat sports nowadays, you have Anthony Joshua, who's who's Nigerian world heavyweight champion. You've got in UFC Usman. Uh, you've got uh, Israel Adesanya, you've got uh, Tony Salam, Really One Lawal, Taiwo Lu, all these guys, you know, big names coming up. Mm. So the sport is, uh, is in, in good, you know, in good uh, place right now. But a lot of work still needs to be done uh, in terms of uh, sponsorship, facilities and, and uh, you know, doing more for the boxers in the country. Now, you know, I was at the stadium some months ago to speak with a couple of boxers and I saw where they train. That, for me, if I was a boxer, I wouldn't be motivated to continue training in that kind of um, environment. Now, we know a couple of challenges from these boxers, but how do you think we can change the narrative in Nigeria? Well, we have to put hands together. Mm. You know, we have to have that mindset that we can do it together. You know, um, you know, I see a lot of, you know, people out there interested in Nigerian boxing, you know, yeah. maybe from the federation, maybe from the, the board or maybe from the promoters and other managers and all that. Um, uh, I, I see that, you know, there's, there, there's no strong relationship between all of us. Uh, there, there is some relationship, but there's no strong relationship, uh, uh, you know, with a, with a plan, a solid plan that we can put hands together and move forward. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for uh, mentioning the the, uh, the facility because you know that's that's very important. Um, we we need to we need to get some uh, better equipments for the boxers. Uh, we need to open a gym, which we're we're working on. Uh, just before the pandemic, uh, we were going to um, make a little announcement that uh, you know we're opening uh, Salah Gulf Promotions, opening a boxing gym, and then now that has been delayed. But yeah, those things have to be taken into consideration, and there has to be a better way of working together and a better way of presenting to to, to sponsors. You know, I, when when I got into into boxing, the every time you know there was a discussion of what Nigerian boxing lacked, it was always sponsorship. Um, and I also agree, but I also feel like it's the way we present it to, to, to sponsors. It's, it's, it's the way we address it, you know. Uh, for example, uh, many brands and many sponsors and many people don't know that every single boxing fight that happens in Nigeria, boxing shows, for example, the, the pro, uh, professional boxing, it, it all goes on um, world boxing data. It's not, it's not just for the Nigerian records or the Nigerian views. This is the same world boxing data that has Anthony Joshua, Can Canelo Alvarez, Triple G, and all these guys. So we're very recognized in, in what we're doing, you know, globally, yeah. uh, which is 
is something that we need to make people understand more and make brands understand more. Mm -hmm. So um, the journey has been has been great. You know, uh, we're building our foundation well. We've got a lot of content right now. You know, uh, we do amateur boxing, professional boxing. We, like I said, we want to open a gym. Uh, we want to work with serious people out there and uh, people like you guys in the media as well. You know, you're doing a great job. And I believe, you know, if we all put hands together and make these people realize um, we're talking about world boxing here. We're not just talking about just Nigerian boxing for the Nigerian viewers. It's a global thing. So there's a big, big um, uh, prospect in terms of taking Nigeria to, you know, to, to the top. And it's it's not that um, hard to do, to be honest. Um, we've got the boxes. We are all registered. We all we all have our licenses. Um, whatever record uh, fights we're, we're having, it's going on box rec, just like any other boxing show in the world. And uh, we need to put hands together, you know, and do a lot of co-promotions and build together, mm. and 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 remove greed from it all, you know, like True. come together as one and 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 see how we can work it out. And look, for example, we have a platform called Las Giddy Fight Night. We're co-promoters of the of the show. Mm -hmm. Co-promoters because we have Unbox Sports and, uh, you know, Freels and Thrills that are part of it as well. And look how far some of the boxers have gone in just a couple of editions that we started last year. Um, this shows that if we put hands together and give these fighters more platform, more fights in the media and, you know, join all that together, trust me, uh, we'll, be, we'll be where we're supposed to be. And... Mm -hmm. Um, I always say this, uh, Nigeria's real chance in any sport of becoming world champions is in boxing. Boxing. Mm, very true. Now, let me pick one of the boxers that uh, is quite famous out there, Ife Jagba. Now, there were rumors some time ago that he was no longer going to be fighting for Nigeria since he has relocated to the U.S. But, of course, he's a professional boxer, and I'm, I believe that he can no longer represent Nigeria at the Olympics. But, of course, he still represents Nigeria. What would you say will be the reason why some sportsmen and women, let's say boxers now, for example, tend to leave the country. They get to dump Nigeria and go uh, become citizens of another country to represent them in, in, in boxing. Well, you know, you, you can't waste so much time in boxing, uh, especially the boxers and all that. Uh, you know, age is a big factor in boxing. You know, you, you feel the difference right away. You know, it's not like in football, for example, you have goalkeepers who get better when they're in their 30s and 32 and 34 and 35, you start seeing, you know, people like Peter Cech and all that, you know, yeah. doing saves that you didn't expect them doing at that age. Um, so people like him, obviously, he knows himself like Ajagba. I've, I've trained with Ajagba in, in, in the gym before. I've, I've, I've spoken to him and all that. And he's, trust me, he's, he's pure Nigerian. He loves Nigeria as his country. And he wants to do that. But I think uh, what happens with people like Ajagba is, uh, they get to a stage where they be, they're, they're really knocking people out and they're really doing very well. They're training so hard and they know what the next step is. And probably the guys in Nigeria that are probably with him or handling him uh, maybe cannot take him to that next step right away. And all of a sudden he gets like Olympic chance. He does very good. He goes abroad. People want to sign him. They put him under certain conditions that, listen, if you want to, you know, be, uh, you know, we take your career forward. You've got to sign this, sign this. And you can understand, like, at that point, you know, he, he has to, you know, make a decision right away. But um, it doesn't change the fact that he's Nigerian and represents Nigeria as well. That, that, that's for sure. So I think it, uh, back to your question of, of what needs to be done for such things is, is proper management and, and, and promotions and all that. And, and, and like I said earlier, you know, if we all put hands together and build such a platform that is so strong, when boxes are coming up here, they're going to look left and right and find something. True, true, very true. Now you talked about age. Let's, let's wrap up with Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Of course, when I heard about Mike Tyson coming back to the boxing ring, I was like, where? Who is he going to fight? What's, what exactly is happening? But of course, I learned it was just an exhibition bout. What would be your take on Mike Tyson? Because a lot of young boxers would want to learn from Mike Tyson. He's about 53 years and he says he's raring to go. And there just might be a fight between Mike Tyson and Holyfield. What do you think about these two legends coming back to the sports? Well, you said it, you know, if it's exhibition and all that and uh, there's charity involved, uh, why not? You know, um, these are big names in the, in, in the game. But um, personally, I don't think, you know, they should 
come back as, as, as a return to boxing. Like, you know, we heard some rumors, Mark Tyson, you know, coming back to boxing, like yeah. being, you know, going for, for proper fights. I think it, it should just be exhibition and, uh, and, and that's it. And, and, and he would tell you, Mike Tyson, both of them would tell you that they might look, you know, good on the pads, like the video that went viral, but it's so much different when you get into your fourth, fifth, sixth minute of, you know, fighting and all that. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, uh, it's great for the for the youth and for people that haven't watched Mike Tyson. It's great for us that, you know, we he's been an idol to a lot of us, you know, growing up. So for exhibition, we're all you know ready for that and and see some some old school uh, power punches. But I don't think it should be part of a career anymore. You know. <laughs> well, thank you for speaking with us this morning, Sally. Thank you for having me. It was an interesting conversation and continue to stay safe out there. You too. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. I mean, the wonderful world of boxing. When I talk to promoters like this, I, I just wish I could get into the sport. And, <laughs> but I know what happened to me. I, I, I think I'll pass out after 10 seconds. I mean, definitely. Like, mm. the world of boxing is very fun. But yeah. then you need to be so disciplined with your body. True. You need to be ready physically. You always need to be at the top of your game. You can't slip up. You can't blink and just try and just take a seat back. So you always need to be at the top of your game. It's a beautiful sport. We've seen so many great athletes over the years. Um, Sugar Ray, we've seen um, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. George Foreman, Mike Tyson, um, Evander Holyfield, the Klitschko brothers. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on and True. on and on. But um, you know what? We're looking forward to more great Nigerian boxers going mm -hmm. through the ranks.